Hello and welcome to my tutorial for simulating real-world markers in Photoshop. I'm going to be coloring the piece that you see here. Um, I have already inked in these four figures and um, now I just want to quickly apply some color and I want to simulate the effect of um, markers, the way markers would look in the real world. Um, so what I have here is four layers that are overlaid over the ink layers. And these layers uh, help create the illusion of markers. Um, this top layer is just a color adjustment layer that is going to tint everything a little bit to the purple. And that's just um, because um, I want this piece to sort of have a purple mood to it. And it will unify the colors that I use. Uh, these next three layers, I'll turn them off and turn them back on one at a time so you can see what they do. These create the illusion of the paper. So this uh, layer is filled with a texture that I scanned in from a uh, brown paper uh, grocery bag. And uh, I put it in hard light mode and turned the uh, opacity down to taste. And this layer is responsible for creating the sort of uh, textured look mainly in the white areas of the paper. And um, in order to boost that texture in these darker ink areas, I added these two additional layers here and here. And these, are, these two are identical to each other, um, but basically I masked out all the white area and only boosted the texture for the dark areas. And the overall effect is sort of a distressed paper look. It looks like I'm uh, working on very pulpy paper. Now I have these four layers here active on top of where I'm actually going to be painting. I'm actually going to be painting underneath all of that. All the ink is going to be on top and then the texture layers are on top of that. So an important thing to note when you're working like this is that when you use the color picker you need to set it to current layer. That way it will automatically pick up the layer, the color from your the layer you're working on rather than the composite color. If you don't use the current layer setting, um, the colors that you pick up from your layer are not going to match the color on the layer itself. Sounds complicated, but the simple thing is just to remember to turn on current layer when you're working like this. All right, so the paper that I just discussed is the first part of the illusion um, for creating simulated markers in Photoshop. The second part is the brush itself. This is my brush. I drew a chisel tip marker print, sort of simulated imprint of a chisel tip marker and, and use that as my brush. And I'm not, not going to be teaching about the brush engine, I just wanted to show that. Um, close the spacing in and I have a tiny bit of size jitter and the angle jitter is set to direction so that, that my brush strokes will follow the direction of my stylus. Um, so that's not a very complicated brush, but the key thing is the opacity needs to be set to about 80% let me just draw a few things um, with this in a very large size so that you can see how it's working. If I lay down a stro stroke of color like this and then another one next to it, you can see that in the middle where the two overlap, I get a darker area. And so this is like real markers. If you go over an area quickly, you won't get the full color out of the marker until you go over it and over it. And so um, one of the key things about this technique is that you don't want to go over areas too many times. If you want to simulate marker, you need to leave the areas gone over only once, as much as you can, so that you keep that texture of the brush strokes in there. If you go over it too many times, it just looks like solid color, and you lose the marker effect. So, let me erase that layer and then do a new one. And the final part of the illusion um, around the edges, you're going to see, and I'll just start coloring now while I'm talking because I don't have much time, but to, to let the um, marker ink spill out a little bit over the edges, leave the edges kind of rough. So you can see um, I'm working very quickly, and I think this is a very quick way to color anyway, but because I am uh, trying to keep this video under 10 minutes long, I really have to work fast. So. For the sky part, I'm using um, very parallel strokes, very linear strokes. And you can see I'm trying not to go completely over any 
these strokes here. It's actually not the color I want to use for the sky, but since I started, I'll just stick with it. And one thing I like about that color is you can really see the uh, marker texture coming through there really well. So those are the three elements of simulating marker. The paper texture has got to be strong. You've got to leave some loose stuff around the edges outside the lines here and you've got to have a brush that sort of looks like a marker but most importantly you've got to use a low opacity setting on your brush all right so that's a pretty intense purple over here i'm not really changing the brush size too much i might change it a little bit if i really need to um, i would invite you to take a look at the final version of this piece this that I'm working on right now is not the final version that I posted. That took a little bit more time when I actually painted the, the final version that I posted. So you can look you know, closer at that if you're interested in seeing uh, what this technique does when you actually take a little time to do it. So I'm, I'm really blasting through this just to you know, keep it short and sweet. If you take your time, um, you can tighten some of the sloppiness down a little bit. And I actually like having just a little bit of sloppiness because I feel like that furthers beauty. But it's one of those things you have to do to taste. Sometimes um, there are certain things you just want to keep the color the way you want it. So brush stroke direction, something that you should put some thought into. I'm kind of following the underlying shapes, um, but you know, the shapes are sort of broken up. For example, here in these jeans, you know, my, my ball of that hard edge there, and then you know, do some more broken up strokes in the more broken up parts of the shape. four figures were drapery studies that I did trying to study how uh, fabric behaves and so following the shapes being working loosely where the shapes are loose and then working more tight where the edges are tight. And then crease the green color. So this green color is really pretty subtle, especially compared to the blue. That blue is actually a little bit darker than what I used in the, in the uh, final piece, but the least detail that looks great there. Both end are really good, so you can see the brush tone. I will try not to go over and over the same area too many times. out of time so I'll just keep working right up to the end but um, I hope that this has been useful I hope that some of you will use this and if you do use it uh, please let me know I'd love to see what you've done so smaller on this brush and just tighten up some areas a little bit again don't want to go over and over stuff too many times so I'll leave the, the illusion of more continuity all right well that about does it so thank you for watching, and like I said, if you decide to use this in something, I'd love to, to see what you do.